Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of Inside NFTs. Today's episode, we're gonna call it Inside Opcat. So what the heck is Opcat? Well, it's a long dead opcode on Bitcoin that the Taproot Wizards new Quantum Cats collection hopes to revive from the dead. And you guys know me, I've worked in the NFT industry for years, but I'd be lying if I said I was technical enough to understand this on my own. So today I've invited a couple members from the Taproot Wizards community team. First, my friend and co-host for this show, it's English NFT. He's a mod for the Taproot Wizards community. English, welcome, sir. Yeah, no, Huda, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, dude. I'm excited to kick this off. English, what the heck is an opcat? What's its relation to the Quantum Cats and the Taproot Wizards? And why is it important? Can you break that down for us to start? Yeah, so uh, Huda, Quantum Cats is the new collection from Taproot Wizards, consisting of 3,333 Quantum Cats. Moreover, it's part of an initiative to bring awareness to Opcat, an operational code which, if implemented, could bring more functionality back to Bitcoin. However, this would require a soft fork of Bitcoin itself, which is actually a pretty ambiguous process. So Tyler has outlined this in his BIPLAN map. The first part of this process is bringing awareness to opcode and get on the radar. Uh, hopefully with people engaging in this quest, this will be the first step in that process. Yeah. So like, as you guys see, it is very technical stuff, but it's really important stuff. So I'm putting a link to all of these resources that we're showing in today's show down in the description of the video. Definitely make sure you're checking that out. Now today we're also joined by Giga Brain Roman, AKA one of the Quantum Cats Team Dead Captains. Roman, I know you wouldn't call yourself an expert, but to someone like me and to most of our audience, you absolutely are. So Roman, welcome. Uh, you're the captain again of Team Dead, and I think you have some interesting perspective on what op Cat is too. Uh, so just like I asked English, what is OpCat and why should people care about it? Hey, English and Huda, thank you for having me. Simply put, it's about 10 lines of code change. OpCat stands for Operation Code Concatenate, referring to a function of joining two strings of data end to end. Yeah, so Roman, these 10 lines of code, is this a change to the Bitcoin blockchain itself? If so, that sounds pretty major. If just 10 lines of code, why should we even care about this? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, OpCat enables great use cases, and I think it would be fantastic to have it on Bitcoin. We could potentially build a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, or DEXs, if you will, where buyers and sellers can be connected. Uh, moreover, this help also helps us improve the Lightning Network and build other Layer 2 protocols on top of Bitcoin to enhance its scalability and transaction efficiency. Well, you said some things there that are very much needed on Bitcoin, like layer twos, like peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces and DEXs. What are other features that could be explored with OpCat on Bitcoin? Yeah, there are so many fun things that will be enabled on Bitcoin, such as Bitstream, which is this decentralized file hosting system paid in Bitcoin, where you get paid to host someone else's files on your computer. You can also have walls to secure your Bitcoin and create spending conditions to safeguard your Bitcoin in case your private key is compromised. Or my favorite, create inheritance plan on-chain. On Moreover, this also helps make BitVM efficient for those viewers who don't know BitVM stands for Bitcoin Virtual Machine. Yeah, so you mentioned uh, BitVM. I, I have heard Tyler chat a little bit about this. And if I'm getting this analogy right, he kind of likens uh, Bitcoin to this basic uh, school kind of calculator that you would have. And by implementing BitVM, it's essentially turning your calculator into like a smart um, or a scientific calculator, if you will, providing more functionality, more computations, and, and essentially more output. But you did mention something about vaults, and that sounds pretty intriguing. Would you tell me a little bit more about these vaults? Yeah, sure. Uh, vaults introduces several features, new features of Bitcoin self-custody that I think are, is beneficial to both individuals and businesses. Let's say you have 10 Bitcoin in your cold storage, you can set rules on your wallet, such as spending limits. So hang on, you could have a rule that says you can only spend like 0.1 Bitcoin at a time? Yeah, you can have a rule that says you can spend 0.1 Bitcoin at a time. Anything over that will be put into a sort of a holding section with a wait period of three days or even three months or whatever you like. At any point in this holding section, the transaction can be canceled. What's beautiful about this is that it also prevents your wallet from being drained in the event your private key is compromised. So then it adds some security, uh, but what if I wanna buy a house and I need to make a large transaction and I can't wait uh, three months, I can't even wait three days? Yeah, for that you can have additional rules that say it's if I'm spending more than 0.1 Bitcoin and I don't want it to go to a three day, three month waiting period, uh, you would need your wife's private key also to approve the transaction. In the event your wife's private key isn't accessible, 
it can be sent to a whitelisted address you control. Yeah, it's funny that you brought up wife because I heard Tyler say something about smart contract functionality. And if you died, you could essentially make a will that controls your Bitcoin. Could you could you explain that a little bit? Let's say you have an inheritance plan set up that your lawyer and wife would know how to access those Bitcoins in the event you no longer exist. You could add your wife's address as a whitelisted address with a three-month wait period in, the, in this inheritance plan or however long you want the waiting period to be. Once the inheritance plan is initiated, your wife will be able to access your Bitcoin after the wait period. At any point in this wait period, you can cancel the transaction if you're healthy and well, just in case your lawyer is trying to cheat you. <laughs> all right. That, that sounds pretty cool, Roman. Um, so with all these robust functions that Opcat could provide, tell me, why don't we already have this? Well, Opcat was available in the earlier versions of Bitcoin. It was disabled as it allowed construction of scripts whose evaluation would make the stack elements exponential in size and could potentially act as a DDoS attack on the Bitcoin network, rendering it unusable. Well, this is no longer the issue with the implementation of Taproot. Tap scripts enforce a maximum stack element size of 520 bytes. Essentially, this risk from the early days of Bitcoin is no longer the case. Yeah, so it sounds like Opcat has tons of pros. However, I would imagine that not everybody would be in favor of Opcat. It must have some downsides, some risk to it. If we've gone over some of the pros of Opcat, Roman, tell us some of the cons. Uh, any changes made to Bitcoin has to be carefully evaluated to mitigate potential security risks in the future. It's important that we know that this is the best tool for the job and there is no better alternative instead. Updates made to Bitcoin is a huge undertaking by itself, like to coordinate with miners, de wallet developers, node runners to ensure the smooth functioning of the network can be pretty challenging. Also, I think it's important that we have standards built out for wallet developers to avoid bugs where users could potentially be locked out of their coins forever. Yeah, I guess getting locked out of your coins is a pretty bad outcome, <laughs> but Opcat does sound very cool. It sounds like it could add a ton of functionality to Bitcoin. You mentioned better alternatives. Uh, I've actually heard Tyler mention uh, some of these alternatives to Opcat. Um, he mentioned something like CTV. Uh, how is that different from Opcat? Does it do anything similar? How does it do things different? How is that a, a viable option? Well, OpCTV is this proposed Bitcoin upgrade, which will introduce new script logic for how a transaction can spend specific coins. Whereas OpCat is more like a Swiss army knife, if you will, it has more expressiveness into it. OpCTV is more like a specialized tool for governance on Bitcoin, where Bitcoin addresses would commit to a potential future transaction, thereby if any coin is sent to this address, the funds can only be spent under certain conditions. It sounds like these are just some early examples of what OpCat would enable, and it does sound incredible, by the way. Ethereum's claim to fame was largely smart contracts, and this does bring Bitcoin a bit more in line then with Ethereum. Uh, now, how do we make it happen, and how likely is it to happen? This opcode will be activated via a soft fork, so miners will need to update their Bitcoin node software, redefining the opcode op success. I think we need to first form some understanding about opcat and form a rough consensus around it for its activation on Bitcoin. It's too early to say how it will play out, but I'm hopeful. I think this will open a new dimension for Bitcoin that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, no, absolutely. Roman, thanks so much for coming on. Huda, thanks for having me. It's been a great discussion. I've had a great time. Yeah, it was great to have you guys both. And yeah, an important discussion at that. Guys, the Taproot Wizards are driving the ordinal space forward, and now with their opcats as they look to revive the once-dead op code. Uh, if you want to learn more, I highly suggest you do that, by the way. Make sure to follow the Quantum Cats on X. Join their Discord. They have a ton of resources, guys. And with that, thank you all for joining us. Let's revive those opcats. See ya.